Hello, I'm Mark Tex Wilson. I'm here today to begin a project in a machine shop at Jamestown Community College, which is located in the Olean, New York campus. A Haas CNC mill will be used to square up a rough block of wax. Its final dimensions will be 3 by 5 inches and 1 inch thick. The main feature of this video will be a custom can face milling program that was written to mill it down to its 1 inch thickness. Before going back inside and getting back to work, using the setup and the preparations that were made in the last video, let's take a closer look at the main program that we'll call and use the custom can face milling cycle. Here's a look at a program that could be written and used by a typical CNC machinist at the control. The end mill is positioned over the leftmost and furthest corner of the stock, which is the coordinate X0, Y0. The spindle is activated with clockwise rotation and set to 600 RPM. The end mill is then brought down to a part clearance plane of 25 thousandths of an inch above the top surface of the part. At this point, the custom can face milling cycle is called with the G65 line. It's really just an external program being called as a subprogram by the simple master program. The P parameter is the program number being called. X is the left to right length of the part. Y is the to and fro length of the part. Z is the total vertical milling depth. And D is the diameter of the end mill. These measurements are all given in inches. F is the milling feed rate given in inches per minute. The can face milling cycle works just like any other can cycle, like a G83 PEC drilling cycle for example. The programmer slash operator at the control doesn't need to understand the code in the CAN cycle that makes it work to use it. Only the arguments passed in the calling statement and what the CAN cycle does need to be understood. This two-dimensional wireframe display illustrates the side of the part being looked at from the perspective of negative Y. At this point, the end mill is positioned at the coordinate X0, Y0, Z.025. This is where the CAN cycle programming comes in. First, the end mill will be positioned 50 thousandths of an inch to the left of the part. Next, it will be positioned at full milling depth. Now the view has been shifted to the top of the part. The next move will be a G1 linear feed to the end of the part at the coordinate X5. An amount equal to the tool's radius has just been milled away. At this point, the feed rate will slightly be increased until the end mill is 50 thousandths of an inch off of the part. Once the part is cleared, the end mill will rapidly be positioned to the next Y coordinate for the next milling pass. Here the previous milling steps will be repeated, but now in reverse. This process will continue until the entire plate is complete. The view has been shifted back to the side of the part from the perspective of negative Y. Once at the final point of the facing process, the end mill will be retracted back to the coordinate Z.025 as the part clearance plane. The final step in the can face milling cycle will be a rapid move straight back to the part reference zero point of X0 and Y0 where it all began. The programming will branch back to the master program that called it at this point. And now for the main event. This block of wax was one and a half inches thick when the roughing process was started. The final 50 thousandths of an inch in Z will be milled off right now. The end mill is one inch in diameter and the amount of its radius, in this case half of an inch, is being roughed off in Y in this first milling pass. One regret in filming this process is that the camera wasn't placed in a higher position where the cutting action could be seen better. It also would have been nice if an airline was available to blow air onto the part to clear away the wax shavings for a better view. This can cycle is dynamic. In particular, the size of the part and the diameter of the end mill can vary. The program will automatically calculate the toolpath based upon these values that have been passed as arguments in the calling statement. The final length of the block will be 5 inches, but 2 tenths of an inch of rough stock was left on it for the squaring process. The end mill is approaching the end of the block, so once the end mill reaches the coordinate, X5.2, you will notice a slight increase in the milling feed rate until the end mill is completely clear of the part. After this, 
A rapid shift equal to the tool's radius of half of an inch will be made negative Y to begin roughing the next milling pass. While this next roughing pass progresses, the end mill is also cleaning up the last pass for a better finish. Any material that may have been missed in the roughing pass is now being removed. In a sense, each segment of the part surface is being double cut. The job will be completed much quicker, especially if milling a larger surface area by using a larger diameter den mill. This can cycle is a standard feature on older Bridgeport and Centroid CNC mills, but Haas does not include it. If this can cycle is desired, it must be programmed in-house or contracted to a more advanced programmer on the outside. The machine must also have the software upgrades installed to use parametric or macro programs. The end mill is nearing the beginning of the part. Once it reaches the coordinate X0, you will once again notice the milling feed rate slightly increase until the end mill is completely clear of the part before shifting a negative Y for the next pass. Once at the ends of the part, the roughing process is complete for that pass. Speeding up the feed rate just speeds up the manufacturing process a little bit. The one pitfall is that too rapid a feed rate will leave milling lines on the part, so it's only slightly increased. Another feature within this custom can face milling cycle is that it automatically adapts for use in metric parameters as well. There is probably a far larger market for metric capable programming in the world than just offering only standard English measurements. The United States of America is about the only country in the world that still uses standard measurement while the rest of the world uses metric. Once again, the end of the part is being approached. As you can see, the same series of steps keeps being repeated on every milling pass just in reverse of that previous pass. Having to calculate a toolpath and write new programs without the benefit of a can cycle every time a different sized part is going to be milled or if a different end mill diameter is used would be time consuming, cumbersome, impractical and costly, and especially without the ability to utilize parametric programming. Ideally, the tool being used to surface mill a part is wider in diameter than the part is wide, so the part can be milled in just one pass, but this isn't always possible. In those cases, the can face milling cycle is the next best option. Also note that using an end mill is much safer and provides a better finish than trying to use a fly cutter. Let's skip ahead in the face milling process. Normally, the edges of the part would be squared before doing the face milling cycle, but all six sides of the block had to be machined to their final dimensions. For this project, it really didn't matter. Since nearly half of an inch had to be milled away, it was done this way so the 5 inch sides could be squared in two simple milling passes which will be done next. The last pass in the roughing process is now in progress. As for the code within the custom can face milling cycle, it won't be shown in this video since it's in the process of being copyrighted. The idea is not original, but all of the time spent programming, debugging, being creative, and making it work is what is being protected. These considerations are also known as intellectual property. Let's skip ahead again. The can face milling cycle is about to make its final pass. Although the roughing process is now complete, the end mill still needs to make that final pass for a consistent finish. The program was written to make a straight rapid move from the last point of the milling process to the beginning point of the process, in this case to part 0 at x0, y0. But you will see in a few moments that two linear rapid moves are actually done to return to that starting point. This is referred to as dog legging. The Haas control can't rapid travel in a true linear path from the end point to the starting point. So the servo motors will drive X and Y at full speed in a 45 degree path towards the end point. The Y coordinate will be satisfied before the X coordinate. Once Y is satisfied, only X will still be in rapid motion back to the original CAN cycle calling point. As the end of the face milling process is nearing the end of its cycle, watch closely for that final dog-legged rapid movement back to the part zero.
There it is. At this feed rate, the face milling process took roughly 8 minutes and 46 seconds to complete. Here's a quick look at the finished surface. The one pitfall to using wax is that the edges don't cut crisply, but the surface is smooth and even to the touch. If the block was made out of metal, the results would be far more impressive to look at. The next stage of the project will be to square up the edges of the block. Let's take a look at the program that will be used to clean up the longer 5 inch sides of it. This program is dynamic, meaning that the input values can easily be changed to mill different length parts. The benefit is that it can quickly and easily be reused to run those other parts. It's based upon formulas for the actual tool movement which are automatically calculated during program execution. The variables are initialized and defined in the six lines following the program number and heading the program before execution begins below. This is a parametric program and the proper software to utilize it must already be installed in the CNC control intended to use it. The program uses a similar approach to the face milling process, but it's much simpler. It will mill the part in two passes. The end mill is one inch in diameter and the part being milled is one inch wide. This will briefly be illustrated in a solid bottle of the part. The program will climb mill 550 thousandths of an inch off of side number one, then wrap it to Y minus 9.50 and climb mill the rest off of side number two. The cuts will overlap by 100 thousandths of an inch for a smooth finish. And now for the next milling step. This milling process was performed in single block mode, so each beep of the control is the next step of the process being started. The similarity to the can face milling cycle will be noticed. Roughly 500 thousandths of an inch of rough stock will be milled off of each side of the part to clean it up and get it down to the finished 3 inch dimension. Side number 1 is in progress right now. Once this side is done, the part will be measured, flipped over in the vise, dead blow hammered to reseat it, and milled by the amount necessary to get it down to 3 inches. The amount of excess stock greater than 3 inches will be subtracted from the current program Z value of Z minus .005 by altering that program detail to mill the next side of the part once it's flipped over. So why not use a larger diameter end mill and do the entire edge in one pass? That's because one edge would be clam milled while the other is conventional milled. The edge that was conventionally milled would take a lot more manual filing to deburr. The two milling passes will take a little longer, but improve quality and reduce the manual deburring effort. The last step in the squaring process will be to mill the 3 inch ends of the part. Although there are better ways of doing it, this simple program will be used to get the job done. The left end of the part is the X0 point and cutter compensation is not being used. The center of the end mill will be at the coordinate X minus 0.5 to skim the edge of the block at the coordinate X0. 25 thousandths of an inch will be climb milled off of this end just to establish a square finished end to measure. Notice the program X coordinate of X minus 0.475. This is a quick look at what will be done using a solid bottle before milling the actual part. Here is the actual finished milling cut about to be made. Once this end is done, the length of the part will be measured and the part will be turned around in the vise to mill the other end. The amount of stock in excess of 5 inches will be climb milled off using the exact same approach. 
only the X coordinate will need to be altered before recycling the program and milling the other end. And here is the finished block, 5 inches long by 3 inches wide and 1 inch thick. All finished dimensions are within 200 thousandths of an inch. Unless indicated otherwise, plus or minus 500 thousandths of an inch is a standard tolerance for a common part like this. This is the Macro G Call page. The program numbers 9010 through 9019 are reserved for custom can cycles. Notice the black highlighted zero at the top right of the page. These zeros can be changed to unused G-code values like 77 and 171. Once this is done, the programs can be called using a G77 and G171 instead of G65 followed by the program number. To make these changes, servo motors must be off. The start button has been activated, but the reset button hasn't been pressed yet. First push the parameter diagnostic button. Use the navigation button to highlight the software tab. Press enter to select a page, and then press the page down button three times. And here we are at the Macro G Call page. The easiest time to do this is at power up before touching anything else. You might also need to use the lockout key to enable this feature. The values for program number 9010 and 9011 are being changed to 77 and 171. Now that the values are changed, the alias G-code numbers will be used to call the respective program numbers. The control can now be initialized as usual. The first thing that will be done is pressing the reset button. The reset button will turn on the servo motors, clear any error messages, and clear any alarms. The power up restart button will home all axes. This is the same master program featured earlier in the video. The program number was already changed to 0 9010 and stored in memory. Notice that the G65 calling statement is now a G77 line. Once the start button is pushed, the simulation will work. And here's the simulation. Pay close attention to the ending. The dog-legged rapid move from the end of the can face milling cycle to its starting point mentioned earlier in the video will be more noticeable here. The first phase of the project has successfully been completed. The next stage will be to personalize it by engraving one end of the block. This will be a memento of the time it was spent here and a very valuable experience that has been attained. I'd like to thank the staff here at JCC for the use of this facility and for all the knowledge that has been gained. I'm Mark Tex Wilson. Thanks for watching.